Okay. Ready? A lot. Fuck, Mary kill. Sorry? You know the game. F, Mary kill. No. You have to have sex with one, you have to marry one, and you have to Oh! Kill the other. Gotcha, gotcha. This is all hypothetical. He's a married man. Shah Rukh Khan. Rithik and Ranveer. Go. Okay. You're gonna go to Pound Town with one. Pound Town? Ranveer. You're gonna Pound Town with Ranveer. Yeah. You're gonna marry. That's okay. You're gonna kill Rithik? Yeah. <gasps> Justice for Rithik, everyone. Yeah, sorry. Tell us who you would have sex with in the comments below. Hey, welcome back to our stupid reactions. <laughs> what about you? Those three. Yeah, it's the same choice. You choose exactly yeah. those same ones. Shower Khan does seem like a gentle lover. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one you might want to be married to, for sure. Know, I think I'm give up his life Ren for Veer you. as well. Renvier seems like a wonderful husband. Yeah, but come on. When we're talking about pounding, just... Well, I could have pounded when I'm married to him as well, can't I? That's not the point. It is. No. Oh, it's his point. No, it was the marrying thing. You're just trying to get off the roof. I made clear you would... I won. I won the hamper. <laughs> you won the hamper. <laughs> uh, anyways, today uh, we got a... Uh, do, 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 do. This is 12 surprising facts about... Marcos. 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 Not Imelda. Which I believe is the Indian Marines, I believe. Uh, and Did you know that? I did not. Yeah, I think that's their acronym. But uh, anyways, that's what this is. Cool. Here we go. And if any of these facts are not factual... Don't shoot the messenger, it's not us. We didn't create the video. <laughs> I don't know why we always have to I know, that. I know. Today is one of the best in the world, ranked at number four on the scale of total military more, power. Should have done more research. Within the Indian military, and we know what's in the, the video. Marine commandos are very elite and are among the best of the best in the entire world. Marine commando stands for Marcos, it's and it's like the Mario special Lopez. forces unit of the Indian Navy created for conducting special operations in maritime environments. They are called the few the fearless, as they are one of the most feared Indian forces. How's it going, everybody? My oh, name is Leroy Kenton, Leroy and Ken. welcome to another episode of FTD Facts. Now, I know quite Probably a bit of you guys have been requesting for us to do a video about Marcos for quite a while. I'm super excited to do this video because, like, these guys are just so intense. But before you continue watching, don't forget to just, you know, give this video a thumbs up if you're liking these episodes. And if you're new here to FTD Facts, you gotta hit that subscribe button, as well as that bell notification notification because I'm telling you like you don't want to miss any videos okay so let the fun begin so the Marine Commando Force or the MCF was created as a special forces unit by the Indian Navy in 1987 for many years the Indian Navy wanted to establish an elite force for special maritime operations a year earlier in April of 1986 the Indian Naval staff created a plan for a special force which would be able to conduct recon raids and even counter terrorist operations in a maritime environment Three naval officers were sent for training with the U.S. Navy SEALs, and further training was conducted with the British Special Forces. These three naval officers formed the first nucleus of the Indian Maritime Special Forces, which was then formally raised in February of 1987. Then shortly after, in 1991, they had its name changed to the Marine Commando that Force, gun. the MCF, and are now familiarly known as Marcos, simply the Marine Commandos. Grenade. Now, the men selected to be yeah. marine commandos are amongst the fittest officers as well as sailors of the Indian Navy. They're selected when they are young in their early 20s and have to go through a very intense selection process as well as training process. The marine commandos are trained for operations on air, land, and sea. So you can see like the prefix marine is like mainly just for formality since they are from the Navy. But in general, you can call them like the all-in-one commandos because they specialize like Navy in things like power jumping all the way to deep sea they diving. Do everything. Now, the people training to be a part of Marcos have to complete a two-year course, the first phase of which lasts just one month in which they undergo many rigorous physical tests of which only 50% of them pass. A 20 kilometer run starts the beginning of every day in Marco's training. Now the next day it's a 20 kilometer night trek with 60 kilogram loads. 
This routine is on alternate days, and there's no like digital simulations or dummies or anything like that used in Marco's training. The training is conducted with live ammunition and guns are always loaded. It leaves no chance of any sort of friendly fire, so you can't be playing around during training. No, someone could actually die. Then for the next nine months, they're taught how to use different types of weapons, as well as conduct special warfare techniques, and how to gather intelligence from their enemy. Now this part of the training is conducted in conjunction with other Indian Special Forces at the Combined Commando School at Surasawa. They also have to go through a parachute training course and a diving course. Now the Indian Marine Special Force first went into action a few months after its rising in Sri Lanka to fight against the liberation of Tamil Tigers ELAM, the LTTE. In November of 1988, mercenaries of the People's Liberation Organization of Tamil Elam, which was a party used Samantha to oppose in, uh, the yeah, LTTE, right? yeah, I think so. well, they attempted a coup in the Maldives, and the Indian Armed Forces quickly began an operation to re-establish the former government. Under the code name Operation Cactus, Indian paratroopers on November 4th, 1988, swarmed the capital. However, 46 mercenaries with 27 hostages, including the Maldivian Minister of Education, they all managed to escape on board a merchant ship until two Indian Navy vessels were able to capture it. So let's fast forward from that fact to Marcos today. Now, the strength of the unit is a very closely guarded secret. However, sources say that the number could be close to 2,000 operatives and 10 groups of 200 personnel each. However, sources say that the number could be close to 2,000 personnel and 10 groups of 200 personnel each. Although Marco's members are qualified to use a parachute and even undergo a combat diver's course, which is not really a common practice in other commando forces, only a few manage to complete the free-for-all parachute training, and it's these few that are selected for operations with the Cosmos CE-2FX-100 two-man submarines. Now, the unit's quick rise has changed the unit's role. It was intended to be dedicated to special maritime operations, but a considerable part of Marcos is doubling as a Marine Infantry assigned to the 340th Brigade with the usual flexibility of commando forces. Marcos has also been very active in Kashmir as part of the counter-terrorist efforts. Their main task is to control the infiltration of enemies from Pakistan to Kashmir through the Jhelum River and Wular, a 65 square kilometer fresh lake. Now, did you know that Marcos are widely feared among terrorists who call them Didawala Faj, meaning the bearded army, because of their bearded disguises like, that they wear in civilian like, areas. Like seals, and these Marine commandos can be launched into operations from ships, aircraft, awesome. and submarines, as I mentioned earlier, in full combat gear. Their transport vehicles consist of HAL Drub, Westland Sea King, the HAL Chittak helicopter, all-terrain vehicles, ATVs for short, and the Indian Navy swimmer delivery vehicle. And finally, just recently, on October 6 of 2017, Marcos on board an INS Trishul carried out an anti-piracy operation in the Gulf of Aden. They stopped a piracy attempt on the Indian ship, the MV Jag Amar. One AK-47 and one magazine with 27 rounds were recovered. Twelve suspected pirates were also captured. So yeah, you see, these guys are no joke. In a world where danger lurks around every corner, the Marine Commander those definitely help Is make things what, uh, a little safer for the people of India boring? as well as other parts of the world. This know. episode of Etsy Facts is brought to you by yeah, Grammarly.com. So the ones that carry out the special ops. The special ops. Maybe? I'm sure they said in the thing, but it's been so long. I know, it's been I... three years since we've seen Uri. Is it really? Yeah. That was one of the first films we saw in theaters. Like the spring of 2019. Wow. Yep. That was a good film, too. Yeah, it was. Um, I still... Uh, Need to show that. I was going to do it last year because of Memorial Day here in the States. Memorial Day is when we remember everyone who died in service for America. And I almost always try to watch several different war films every year at that time. And yeah. I wanted to watch Uri with all of the kids, but everybody scheduled it. It didn't work out. So yeah. Micah still hasn't seen it. Oh, he hasn't? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was that was great. I, I do love... My dad actually used to teach when he was... We were talking about... Um, uh, teaching, learning weapons for months and months, at least for the Coast Guard. 
I mean, I'm sure actually he did it for a bunch of people. He actually taught people how to use specialized weapons. Nice. He was the, after so long, because he yeah. was in the military for 30 right. plus years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think he's technically not in the military anymore, but now he's a freelance contractor. <laughs> no, well, that happens. They kind of kick you out. Yeah. But then the freelance contracting, that, I mean, all of the people who were there in Benghazi <clears throat> in the movie 13 Hours, that depicts what took place in Benghazi, those were all former military contractors that still do what they did in the military. They're just doing it as independent contractors now. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> They're <laughs> military yeah. for hire. I mean, basically, my dad could have stayed in, but he would have had to have been like a general, mm. which means he might have had to go... Got it. Go like... Uh, he's been deployed... And command. Two or three times, but he'd have to go out and like probably into a different country and he's like oh, yeah i have no desire to uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to do anything I, like that i'm still wrapping my head around a 20 kilo kilometer run every day i can't even begin to with a pack right well yeah well every day they did a 20 kilometer run and then in addition to that they get to the place where they add another one with a pack on top of it that's 12 miles I don't like it. Just a 12-mile run. I've. What's the farthest you've ever like gone on a run before? Probably 10. You've done a 10-mile run? Yeah, I'm good at running. Well, wow. I, used, I used to be good. I used to do 5-mile runs. I don't know if I'm good anymore. I used to do 5-mile runs regularly. I used to do a 5-mile run 5 days a week. And don't start doing that. You'll get shin splints. you got to build toward it. I can't comprehend 12 miles my, every day. My younger brother used to, in high school. He was a cross-country runner. Um, and so, Incredible. And so I think he would do some ridiculous, like 20, 30 miles. Sometimes. Sure. It's ridiculous. What do you, he doesn't do that anymore. He's a small EA and he's fat now. Because so. <laughs> <laughs> he just drinks but wine. Yeah, I just, I can't, I can't. Five, five was my normal workout thing. The farthest I ever tried to go was a 10 mile run. And I got to about mile between seven and eight, and I was done, and I walked the rest of the two. Mm. And that was after doing five-mile runs every day. Yeah, when I was younger, I used to be really good at running, because um, I, I have long legs. Yeah. And I was really slender. Slender. Yeah. I was lightweight. Right. And so it was, like, really easy for me to just go, and it wasn't, I didn't have well, to Oh, you played football, so I it was, like, spending a lot soccer. of energy to uh, to. Go fast and go long. Right. Uh, that's what your mom said. Hey, uh, hey there. <laughs> but yeah, I can't. I actually always wanted to, um, growing up, do like a military training. I think, yeah. even though it's ridiculous and strenuous, I think it would be kind of fun. I've been holding out hope for the day to be cast in some military film that requires you to go through basic. But I know it's not fun. Yeah. But in my mind, it'd be kind of fun. I. <laughs> the thing I know, I've mentioned this before. I could handle a lot of the physical things. It's the sleep deprivation that yeah. they put them through. That would break me. Yeah. Without question, I would not be able to handle the sleep deprivation. Yeah. And that's one of the primary things. They always talk about that, at least with the Navy SEALs, and I'm sure it's the same for for these people. The fact that when it's it's you have to have the physical fitness, but it isn't the physically strong that typically do well. You have to be mentally strong because what they want to do is break you mentally. And sexually strong. <laughs> Sorry, I have to degrade the conversation somehow. Anyways, <laughs> let us know the videos we can react to down below. <laughs>